Welcome, this is Minute with the Mayor, and we are here with our mayor, Dean Trantalis. How you doing? Hey, thank you for having me. We have so much fun and important things to talk about today. We do, we do. We are in the middle of hurricane season, uh, well underway. Talk to us about how neighbors can prepare. Well, because it's uh, hurricane season, we really need to be very careful. As we saw what happened last year on the West Coast, we yes. certainly need to be prepared in case something so devastating should ever try to impact our communities. Mm -hmm. So the city of Fort Lauderdale has uh, hardened itself in so many of the infrastructure needs that we have been trying to invest in. Uh, and so those will continue to help us make sure that should a hurricane ever hit us, that we're prepared for that. But as an individual, individual families, individual homeowners need to also be prepared. So there is a website and there is a, a place on uh, the city website that people can go to. And that is fortlauderdale.gov slash alert FTL. I'll repeat that, fortlauderdale.gov slash alert FTL or you can call the central uh, switchboard, which is 954-828-8000, 828-8000. People can call that, mm -hmm. and they can get the emergency information uh, directly to us as people need them. Yeah, our website is very thorough. There's also fortlauderdale.gov, uh, and you search hurricane preparedness, which has kits and evacuation zones right. and all the things you need right. to be as prepared as possible for exactly. you and your family. And don't wait till the last minute to call. Right. Call in advance if, if we, once we know that something is coming our way, the city is prepared to respond. Yeah, and those alerts that you can get by text or phone, as you mentioned, right, exactly. are very helpful during an emergency. Exactly. exactly. All right, so Fort Lauderdale is also one of several cities supporting a campaign to be safe on the railways, you know, as you're driving and those, you know, bar bars come down for the, the train tracks. Right. To be careful. So, unfortunately, there are still people who think they can outrun the trains, okay? And uh, and it has been deadly in many, many cases, and, and it's unfortunate that, that the message has still not gotten out to folks. The uh, Florida Department of Transportation has put up barriers and, and various ways to try to inhibit people from trying to sneak around the, uh, the railroad gates. Um, but, uh, uh, but at the same time, we're putting out an education program. And that education program is important for people to realize that these trains don't uh, mince words, they come fast, mm -hmm. and they come without warning, except the barriers come down, right? right? That's the warning, and you need to just respect that. So the Florida Department of Transportation has come out with the Don't Risk It campaign. Okay. It's an education pr uh, program in which people can uh, understand and realize how important it is to remain safe. Yeah. Be patient, people. It's it's all about being patient and uh, letting the train go by. It usually takes between 20 and 30 seconds for a bright line train to go by. Mm -hmm. And so I think uh, uh, we can certainly hold our breath and you know stay still for a few minutes. Yeah, absolutely. The video is impactful. It shows a man you know in the car with his kids and what could have happened had he not waited. So check that out. We, we'll, yeah, we should have a plan here. I saw that here. and it's really very really unfortunate that anyone would ever try to risk that. Yeah, don't do it. Not worth it. All right, so moving on to you know fun stuff. Um, you know, you did something for the first time I want to talk about. You were at the Marlins game and you threw out the first pitch. Tell us about right, that. Right, so the Bright Line invited me along with the uh, Marlins organization to come down and to, first of all, take the Bright Line to show people how easy it is to take the Bright Line from Fort Lauderdale. It's a quick 30-minute trip. You avoid all the traffic, the tolls, the aggravation, and you uh, are ushered into the downtown area. And then from there, you take a shuttle to the uh, to the stadium. And of course, it's fully air-conditioned. It was a great day. Uh, I was honored with uh, making the first pitch that day. And uh, uh, I, I'm, I, those folks that are on the team do not have to worry about any competition. <laughs> <laughs> You're taking yes, their jobs. Yes, Watch out, pitcher. taking their jobs away. So, uh, uh, but they're all very nice and respectful, and it was a great day at the ballpark. And we won, which was yes. great. Yes. Who did we beat? Who do we beat? Yeah. We beat Colorado. I love it. Yes. All right. And moving on to another major sports team that we've been talking about for a while now. Um, we're going to be... Maybe. Inter Miami. Yeah, Inter Miami. Yes, Miami. yes. we're very, we're very, uh, very proud to continue to host the Inter Miami games here in Fort Lauderdale at the Drive Pink Stadium, and uh, of course, uh, uh, Leo Messi has now come into our community. Uh, uh, hopefully, he'll be a homeowner in our community soon. But uh, certainly, over the next two to three years, uh, this will be his home base, and we're very proud to have him uh, as part of, you know, Inter Miami as well as a, a Fort Lauderdale resident because. Let's face it, uh, you know, this is a growing sport within America. Uh, right. The academy to, to train young stars uh, is all happening at, at the uh, Drive Pink Stadium. 
and, uh, and Fort Lauderdale wants to partner with the organization and make sure that, uh, uh, you know, that the games uh, have no interference from you know, parking issues or traffic and whatever we can do to f help facilitate the, 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 the great experience that people will have coming to the games here. Are we allowed to talk about possibly giving him the key to the city? So uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm hoping on, on their first MLS home uh, home uh, experience will be here August 20th. So I hope to be able to attend that uh, game and to be able to finally welcome him officially to the city of Fort Lauderdale. All right. Well, we can't wait to capture that. Hopefully, it happens on August 20th. We'll keep our Absolutely. eye out. Yeah, we'll be. That'll be a great day for everybody. Oh my gosh! Yeah. Thank you, Mayor, so much. You're very, very welcome. Thank you.